thy sake, I lift your holy name upon high. I worship and adore, sing praise forevermore. Hosanna, you're my King forevermore. Good morning, Northwest. And good morning to those on Zoom and also to those that will be watching later on YouTube. It's really cool. Uh, Katie Myers, mom and dad, are visiting with us. Welcome uh, from Oklahoma City. And uh, Katie's dad was telling me, she, he goes, well, I see you often, and I'm thinking, what? You know, I didn't say that, but that was what was going on in my brain. But anyway, he watches a lot of times on YouTube and stuff, so... Hey, it does come in handy, right? Yeah. But, uh, oh, you know, really do. Any, any of you that are watching on YouTube later, uh, we, we, we feel like you're a part of our family. So, welcome. Um, new beginning. Yesterday, uh, Sherry and I were, hey, Jeff. Good to see you. You got off work today, right? Is the Kroger's closed today? <laughs> I was telling Sherry on the way over, there are a lot of stores that are closed today, like Walmart, I believe, and Target, and some of the others, and different ones, so that's awesome. Um, but yesterday, Sherry and I uh, went to the hospital and did some visiting there and different things, and then uh, I, I, uh, I needed a new battery for my watch, uh, Jim, my, my Fitbit kicked the bucket. <laughs> so, uh, I need a new battery for this watch. And uh, while we were there, there were about probably half a dozen of the workers were trying to figure out how to get the battery in the, in the watch. And <laughs> I kid you not, it was interesting. Uh, it was really, really good. Uh, actually, and our conversation was really good because actually we had a conversation, I had a conversation with one of the, the associates there, a, a, a middle-aged woman, I guess, and um, we got to talking about Easter. We are talking about the resurrection, and she goes, I just, I, I, I just don't look forward to it. And she goes, I, I, I go to church, but I don't look forward to Easter Sunday. And Sherry goes, oh, well, David's a, a preacher. And so, you know, that changes everything, right? Uh, but, <laughs> thank you, honey. Uh, but anyway, it, it led to a conversation because she goes, the reason is, is because her mom makes all the family, even though she's an adult, makes all the family attend a 12 a.m. Easter service. And she goes, it goes to at least 4 a.m. And her, and her question was, and what she was telling me is, is I love Jesus, but how many times do we just keep doing the same old, same old? And I told her, that we're not here to worship Easter. We're not even here to worship the resurrection. We're here to worship the one who was resurrected. Amen? It's all about Jesus. It's all about the Christ, the, the anointed one. And so that's kind of, believe it or not, I was telling Aaron, I mean, I, I, I read a lot, I study a lot, 
some of these things, you know, are months in, in, in thinking and meditating on and, and reading. Uh, and this sermon really came about last night when I lay down to go to sleep and I didn't go to sleep. And, uh, and, and I think it was that the Spirit was speaking to me. And the, the titles stay the same, but a lot of what I want to share with you today uh, has changed. Uh, because, you know, we all need new beginnings. Amen? Don't we? We all find ourselves sometimes with our lives being a mess. We've talked about that a couple of weeks ago. We all sin. Every single one of us, we sin. All of us disappoint God from time to time. But the wonderful thing about the resurrection is every single day is a new beginning. And the passage I was going to read, there's several I could have read, but uh, and you don't need to turn here because I'm just going to touch on it for about 60 seconds maybe. Uh, but Lamentations, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah was the writer of Lamentations. And, you know, he's called the weeping prophet. And, and because he's the one that, that he was speaking to God's people in the Old Testament time. And, and they were just totally rebelling against God. And God had a message for Jeremiah to give to the people that, you know, you're, you're not listening. You're not, you're not obeying my word. I, I came to give you life. But you keep making the wrong choice. And the wrong choice is to keep leading you further and further and further away from me. And, and, uh, and so when he writes Lamentations, he's writing these words in sorrow as he thinks about his people, as he thinks about God's Old Testament church. Because they're so far away. But he says this in Lamentations 3, uh, verse 21. Well, let me start with 19. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. The Babylonian Empire, he said, you know, they're going to invade Jerusalem. They're going to destroy the temple of God. They're going to destroy the whole city. They're going to take people captive. They're going to kill and slaughter so many more. And, and so he's thinking, you know, they're going to take them to, to Babylonia. They're going to take them from their homes. And so he's thinking, you know, the thought of my suffering, the thought of me being homeless and the homelessness of so many more, it is bitter beyond words. I never thought, I, I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet, I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies, they never cease. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies, they begin afresh each morning. Mercy is God withholding what we deserve. Every single one of us deserve punishment. Every, if you're sitting there this morning thinking, oh, not me, you know what? I am just like God always. There are none of us just like God always. I could probably ride with you in the car for less than an hour, and I can tell you, oh, you're not like God always when somebody pulls out in front of you. So often, none of us are not like God. We have thoughts, we have attitudes, we have words that come out of our mouths, we have actions in our lives that are nothing like God. But yet, he says this, God is faithful. God is faithful, and his mercies, they begin fresh every single day. God withholds punishment that we deserve every single day. That's great news. 
Every single day is a brand new beginning. And if you do have your Bible, you can turn to Genesis chapter 1, and this is going to be odd, thinking, what? Resur we're, we're, we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus? But look at Genesis chapter 1, because what I told the lady yesterday, it's, it's not about Easter. It, it's not about, you know, celebrating Easter, or celebrating the resurrection. It's about celebrating Christ. And the question really is this. What does today mean for our lives? What does it mean for your life? What does it mean for our world? And in Genesis 1, picking up verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Before God created this planet that we're living on. It was just God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he tells us that the Holy Spirit is hovering over the deep waters, the surface of the waters. The earth was formless. There, there was no form. There, we, we do not have the earth like it is today and all the planets and, and, and the solar system. It was not there. It was just formless. There was no form. It was just, I, you know, how do you describe it? It was empty. Total darkness. Pitch black. And there were some deep waters. And in the original language, these deep waters indicate that, that there was a lot of turmoil, there was a lot of chaos. And there was the Holy Spirit hovering over the chaos, hovering over the emptiness, hovering over the, the formless, formlessness of everything. No form. And then God said, let there be light. And then you can read the rest of the creation story in chapter 1 and also in chapter 2. But here's what I want us to see and what we're going to talk about for just a very few minutes this morning. The Holy Spirit represents new beginnings. The Holy Spirit takes chaos and brings order, brings form. And all of our lives, there are moments that our lives are totally chaotic. There are moments in our lives that it seems like everything around us is completely dark. We were talking about 
you know, the, the day between Resurrection Sunday and, and what we call Good Friday, what happened on Saturday? Can you imagine for the disciples of Jesus how dark, how chaotic their minds were, their lives were, their thinking was whenever they recognized that Jesus had been killed, that their rabbi, their teacher had been killed and, and placed in a grave and he's in the grave. Now what? The fear that no doubt that they had that, that they were going to be the next ones that they were going to come after to kill them because Jesus was their teacher, their rabbi. And many of us, every single day we find ourselves in that kind of a situation. And, and, and now flip over to John 1 and read, read this with me in John chapter 1. Picking up verse 1. Listen to what John says. And John is writing this about 60 years after the resurrection of Jesus. John is near the end of his life. He's one of the 12 apostles that Jesus called at the very beginning. And now, as he's thinking back, 60 years to when Jesus was crucified, Jesus was resurrected. Here's what he says to, to us today and to, to his followers at the time he was writing this. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. He created everything through Him. And nothing was created except through Him. The Word, the Logos, gave life to everything that was created. And His life brought light to everyone. No one is left out. Regardless of how dark anyone's life may be, how dark your life may be from time to time, how far away we may feel from God, and that there's no way that, that, that I can even see my way out, he says he gives light to every person, every single human being. And the light, it shines in the darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it. The Word, Logos, Jesus, is the living, breathing meaning of God. He is God. Jesus. The beginning. Today, whether you're not a believer, or whether you are a believer, a follower of Jesus, But you find yourself in a dark place. You find yourself wondering. Does God love me? Does he care? Maybe you gave your life to Jesus generations ago. Six, seven generations, 70 years or more. I know some of you have. Some maybe three or four generations, 30 years ago. Some maybe the last five to 10 years. And maybe some less than a year, just several months. And, and you know, I was thinking about when God created the world, when God created in the very beginning in Genesis 1. 
Everything was fresh. Nita, can you imagine how fresh everything was? You know, right now, Sherry and I, we were just blown away. We went to Nashville last week. It was a whole lot fresher there than it is here. I mean, everything is green. The trees are coming out. The flowers, everything was so lush. But even here, seeing the, are those Easter lilies? Is that what, is that what those are called? Or what are those flowers? Daffodils? Okay, this tells you how much I know about stuff. The flowers are beautiful right now. You don't want me tending to your flowers. I love them. I love looking at them. I love smelling them. But I can destroy them trying to care for them. And I look at the Genesis 1 when God created the world. Everything was brand new. All the animals got along with each other. The lion and the lamb eating together, sleeping together without the lion devouring the lamb. All the animals, all the plant kingdom. Adam, Eve, everything was perfect. And then sin destroyed it. And there's some of us that are sitting in this room right now that, that we feel that very same way. Man, when I gave my life to Jesus and I was baptized into Christ. I, I still remember when I was baptized back in 1968. Yeah, I'm old. But 1968, I still remember. And I remember that day. It was on a Sunday and I can remember. And I wasn't planning on being baptized that day wasn't something but I mean the message and I, I knew I wanted to live for Jesus for the rest of my life and I can remember that whole day going out and man you know what I mean I didn't want to I didn't want to mess it up you know what I mean John I didn't want to I didn't want to put a blotch on it and then I remember when I put a blotch on that day. I sinned. And I didn't know what to do. Because I felt like everything was perfect and I ruined it. I killed it. I destroyed it. And I know that there's some in this room, you feel that about your, you know, you gave your life to Christ. You wanted to do the right thing. You wanted to live for Jesus. But it's been a struggle. And there's things that right now you may feel like it's chaotic in my life and, and it's chaotic in my brain. It's chaos and, and questions and it just seems like there's so much darkness in the world and it's hard for me to see the light and to be the light. Look over at John 13. In, in, in John chapter 13, Jesus is getting ready. He, this is his last night. This is the night that he's going to be betrayed. And he's celebrating the Passover feast with his 12 apostles. This is where he washes their feet. And, and, you know, as, as they're eating together, Jesus also points out that there's one that's there that's actually going to betray me. And it was Judas. Now, they didn't know that. Judas knew that, but they didn't know that. The others. And so verse 31 of chapter 13 as soon as Judas left the room, Judas got up during the meal and he left. 
Jesus said, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son, and he will do it, do so at once. And listen to Jesus, dear children, I will be with you only a little bit longer. As I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I am going. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. I'm leaving. You can't come where I'm going right now. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to love one another. Love one another. Do we love one another? In this room. Everyone in this room. We love those outside of this room. The people that Jesus says, my father, this is how he showed his love for this world. He gave me, Jesus said, he gave me so that anyone who puts their faith in me would have eternal life. So Simon Peter in verse 36, he goes, well, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come now, Lord? Peter asked. I'm ready to die for you. And Jesus answered, die for me? I'll tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. Over the next few hours, things are going to get very dark. Matter of fact, when Jesus was on the cross and darkness came, I think from noon to three, the darkest day in history. And it was going to get dark and chaotic in their individual lives. But you know how when I read in Genesis 1, the Holy Spirit was there and he was hovering over the darkness. He was hovering over the chaos of the deep waters. And the Father spoke and through the Holy Spirit, he said, let there be light and there was light. Well, the Holy Spirit, Jesus talks to them about the Holy Spirit again. And he says in chapter 14, uh, verse 15, Jesus says this. He goes, if you love me, obey my commandments. Let me just say this. Why do we have a hard time obeying the commandments of Jesus? I had another conversation, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, out visiting uh, some people, and, and uh, I don't ever want to get up here and, and pound and point and scream, you know, that, man, the commandments, you've got to obey the commandments. If you love Jesus, you're going to obey his commandments. It's natural. Why? Because we trust him. I trust him. And Jesus said, you know, back when he gave the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, when he was given, this is what it looks like to be my follower. You remember, this is the verse that we used all of, at least the first three to four months. I think I used it all of last year. 
Jesus said, whoever hears these teachings of mine, whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, fleshes them out, will be like a wise person who built their house on a rock, a foundation, a rock foundation. Because when the storms came and it beat on that house and the rain just came and, and wanted to just wash it away, that house stood firm. Is he talking about building houses? No. He's talking about our lives. He's talking about your life. There are storms that are going to come. And we know that. If, you know, I don't have to ask you, have you been through any storms? Have you lost a loved one? That's a storm. Our own health financial stuff, relationships, so many storms that beat on us. And Jesus said these words, and he made this promise to each one of us, folks, that if we build our lives on him, the foundation, by putting his teachings into our lives, being obedient to him, it's not so that he could, you know, put a rope in our, in a, a ring in our nose and a rope on it and guide us around. It, it, He's doing it to bless us, to give us life. So if we love Jesus, we'll obey his commandments. And he says, I'm going to ask the Father if he will give you another advocate, someone who's going to advocate for you, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later he will be in you. See, Jesus was talking to his apostles and his disciples in the flesh and blood right then and they're standing there and they have always had the Holy Spirit right there with them, helping them. But Jesus said there's going to come a day when he's no longer going to be beside you, but he's going to be inside of you. Hello, church. That's today. That's us. That's how we can have new beginnings. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each one of them. That's a promise for every single one of us. The one who can take your chaos, the one who can take your chaotic thinking and mind, the one who can, can take that darkness that, that enters into us. We find ourselves in a, in, a, in, a, in a place of darkness sometimes for weeks, maybe months, maybe years. The one who can bring order back to your life and meaning and purpose is the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus through His Holy Spirit that He has promised to put inside of each one of us. Man, I promised. I, I, I told, I told uh, Caleb, I listened to a sermon on YouTube, and I said, dude, I love you. And he goes, what? And I go, well, I love you. I go, man, you went 51 minutes or 52 minutes. And, 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 and I, you know, I remember when Ryan, you remember Ryan, when he used to preach? And, and, and Aaron reminded me, he, he preached one sermon, it was 12 minutes. And then I would get up and preach 35, 40 minutes, and it seemed like it was a week. So I love you, Caleb. Keep preaching those 50-something many. You can go 60 so that when I get up to preach, these sermons seem very doable for you. But I am going to skip ahead a little bit because I want to get to this part. When Jesus was crucified and put in that tomb, so much chaos, 
So much darkness. So much misunderstanding, even for his followers. They had no idea what was going on. Like the brother here said, uh, in, in Bible study, you know, they were looking for Jesus to come and set up this earthly kingdom. When, when, when you look at Acts chapter 1, I brought this up in Acts chapter 1, and, and I'm going to finish out in chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Acts, and I promise it won't be that long. But in verse 6, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Jesus is getting ready been on, on the planet for 50 days in his resurrected body, teaching them, preparing them. And as he's getting ready to sit back into heaven, here's their question. They kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Restore our kingdom. Free Israel and restore our physical kingdom. They still didn't get it. But in chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Why would he do that? And, and by the way, it was more than just the 12. There were 120 disciples around 120 disciples that were gathered there. You'd see that in chapter 1, verse 15. So there were 120 that were given this ability through the Holy Spirit to speak in all of these different languages because all of these people had come for the Passover feast and to celebrate the Pentecost uh, uh, as well. And so they were from all, these Jews had been scattered and were all over the world, and they had picked up the languages of the countries that they were living in. And so now they're hearing these people speak in their own language and it's blowing them away. And, and, and so Peter, in verse 14, Peter, he steps forward. The one who had denied Jesus three times, denied that he even knew Jesus. But now here he is filled with the Holy Spirit. He steps forward with the other 11 and, and he shouts to the crowd and he begins to tell them about Jesus. And he tells them in verse 32, God raised this Jesus from the dead and we are all witnesses of this. And now he is exalted to the place of the highest honor in heaven. At God's right hand. And the Father, as He had promised, gave Him the Holy Spirit. Gave Jesus the Holy Spirit to do what? To pour out upon us, His followers, just as you see and hear today. For David himself never ascended into heaven, yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. So Peter says to let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. And Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and to the other apostles, now what do we do? Can you imagine being in their shoes? These are the very people that Peter is speaking to about Jesus and who Jesus is. These are the very ones that were in the crowd and they were shouting whenever uh, Pilate asked them, okay, do you want me to release Jesus or do you want me to release Barabbas? And here they are, they're shouting, crucify Jesus, crucify him, 
crucify him, put him to death. And if you remember, Pilate really didn't want to do that. Pilate really wanted to release Jesus. But he caved to the crowd. And he had Jesus crucified. And now they're wondering, what now? It's over for us. There is no new beginning. But Peter did reply this. Oh yeah, there's a new beginning. Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Your sins can be forgiven. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those who are far away. All who have been called by the Lord our God. And then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. And those who believe what Peter said were baptized and, and added to the church that day about 3,000. If you're here today, maybe you feel like there's no hope. If you're on Zoom or later on YouTube, and, this, and, and this, this message is for all of us. Maybe for some sitting in this room, and as a look in your faces, the majority of us have been baptized into Christ. But maybe you've blown it. Just like Adam and Eve did when they were given this, this fresh canopy in the garden. Perfection. And yet they messed it up. We've seen that. Just like every single one of us have done. But maybe you It felt like there's no way for me to return. There's no way that I can get that fresh start again. And I'm here to tell you today, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, yes, there is a new beginning every single day. His mercies are fresh every single day. Every single day. And so we, we normally don't have an invitation time per se, I want to say to all of us in this room, the invitation is always open. If you're here and, and, and sometimes you think, wow, you know, I want to know more about Jesus or, or would you talk to me about Jesus or, or just, just, you know, what do, what do I need to do? Just call me. My, my phone number is on the webpage. That's my cell phone number. From day one, 17 plus years ago, I told Meta and Betty, I said, hey, put, put my number on the, on the webpage, in the bulletin. Because I want to be available. And if you're on, and, I, and I've actually talked to some on YouTube that, that were from, uh, actually from Arizona. So wherever you are, if today you feel like there's no hope, no, yes, there's hope today because of the resurrection of Jesus. And you can have God living in you today to help you to sort through all of the chaos and all of the darkness and all of the junk that's out there in our world. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And so maybe today you're sitting there and you've already been baptized and you're thinking, you know what? But you know what? 
you can come and, and today and, and, and let us pray with you. Let us pray for that newness all over again today, for God's forgiveness. And you don't have to do that. You can, you can do that yourself. 1 John chapter 1 tells us, if God says, you know what, if you say you're not a sinner, then you make God out to be a liar. You know what he said? He was writing to Christians there, to believers there, and he said, God knows that we fall short. God knows that we sin. But he chooses to look at us through the lens of Jesus and his life. And on that cross, that, that Friday, when he was crucified, he became your sin, my sin. And that's why Jesus felt and knew that God had abandoned him. Because God, who is perfection, who is pure, could have nothing to do with sin. And he was abandoned by his Father so that you and I would never, ever be abandoned by our Abba Father. Maybe you're part of a small group. You feel more comfortable. Have, pray together. Tell them, hey, you know what? Man, I have, I have really fallen and slipped. Would you pray for me, with me, encourage me? But if you want to do that today, don't leave here without either, when we sing the invitation song in a moment, you could just simply come and we'll pray with you. But if you've never been baptized into Jesus, that's, and we talked about that, I think, two or three weeks ago when we were looking at Romans 6. That's where we put to death our old self and say, you know what, I'm done with this done with this chaos and darkness and struggling. I want Jesus. And all of your sins will be erased. All, everything. Brand new start. And then all of a sudden you think, okay, that's great. But then three days later, I mess up. Then what? And that's where I, I love 1 John 1, 7 because he says, if we walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, if, if, if we're living for Jesus and wanting to live for Jesus, he says whenever we sin, his blood will continuously cleanse us from all sin. Automatically. Again, he knows that we need the blood of Jesus every single day. New beginning. So what do I need to do? So often what we try to do, we try to fix it ourselves. Well, I've I, I got to make some changes first before I can do that. No. It's just as you are right now is how Jesus invites you. And so we're going to sing an invitation song. We're going to stand and sing it. If you want to be baptized today, you can be baptized today. Or if you need prayer today, just as you are, why don't you come? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy God.